will offer in his dwelling an oblation with sounds of great gladness. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Give ear unto my voice, O Lord, when I call upon you. For you have been my helper to not abandon me, nor look down upon me. Oh, Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. David's. I'm Chuck Treadwell, the rector of the parish. Um, I want to explain that we're not at Camp Allen. I know we're not at Camp Allen, but we're dressed like we're at Camp Allen uh, because when we got here, the AC in this room was off. Um, so it's been really, really warm in this room. It feels like they've got it back on, but it's still pretty warm. So we're just going to be vestment free today. That's what we'll do. Um, but anyway, we're still excited to have all of you. We thank you if you're joining us online. We're excited to have you as well. Um, the bulletin will be put in the chat. You can just click on that. It'll take you straight to the order of worship. For those of you in the room, you have your order of worship. You have everything you need. You might need a hymnal, actually, to sing a song or two. No, we don't even need a hymnal today. Mark's correcting me there. So everything you need is in that order of worship. So let's uh, lift our voices in song.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. pray. Keep, O Lord, your household, the church, and your steadfast faith and love, that through your grace we may proclaim your truth with boldness and minister your justice with compassion. For the sake of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the Word of God. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre, and he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, my Lord, if I find favor with you, Do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves. And after that, you may pass on since you have come to your servant. So they said, do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, make ready three measures of choice flour, knead it and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf tender and good and gave it to the servant who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, where is your wife, Sarah? And he said, there in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season. And your wife, Sarah, shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent entrance behind him. Now Abraham said, and now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in age, and had ceased to be with Sarah after a manner of women. And so Sarah laughed to herself saying, after I have grown old and my husband is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh and say, shall I indeed bear a child? 
now that I am old, is anything too wonderful for the Lord? At the set time, I will return to you in due season, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. He said, oh yes, you did laugh. The Lord dealt with Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had promised. Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age, at the time of which God had spoken to him. Abraham gave the name Isaac to his son, whom Sarah bore him. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old, as God had commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Now Sarah said, God has brought laughter for me. Everyone who hears will laugh with me. And she said, who would ever have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? Yet I have borne him a son in his old age. The word of the Lord. I will walk in the presence of the Lord, in the land of the living. I will walk in the presence of the Lord, in the land of the living. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon him. I will walk in the presence of the Lord, in the land of the living. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation, and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. Precious in the sight of the Lord, is the death of his servants. O oh Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem, hallelujah. I will walk in A reading from the epistle of the Apostle Paul to the Romans. Since we are justified by faith, 
we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to his grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, I ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon from the land of Canaan, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed Jesus. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment. Give without payment. The Gospel of the Lord.
May I speak in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God. Please be seated. Well, good morning, saints. <laughs> it's a joy to be with you this morning. And for those of you who do not know me, my name is Marcia Paul, and I work at the Doxison office in Houston alongside Bishop Doyle. Um, I help to manage his staff and I help him with amplifying his vision and mission for the diocese and other duties as assigned. <laughs> so, but I'm glad to be with you all today. So, imagine being an enslaved person in Texas at the beginning of another long, hot summer. And this was the summer of 1865. And because of the state's distance from the rest of the divided nation, and given that Texas itself saw little action during the Civil War, it had been quite easy for plantation owners and enslavers to hide the news of the Emancipation Proclamation, which had been signed by President Abraham Lincoln two and a half years earlier. And so despite this federal proclamation of freedom, these, these enslaved women and men toiled under the old status quo of bondage and terror. And then again, imagine being an enslaver and having heard the proclamation of freedom, choosing to cover it up. Here were people who understood that liberation had come, and yet who willingly, willfully, purposefully did all they could to obscure and withhold freedom from those who were literally dying for it. I believe that most of you are aware that Juneteenth, which will be celebrated tomorrow, and Juneteenth is a combination of June and 19th, and that it commemorates June 19. 1865, when Union soldiers brought the news of freedom to enslaved black people in Galveston. And that was a little over two months after the Confederacy had surrendered. And the slaves learned that freedom they were hoping and praying for had been de denied not just for two months, but for two and a half years. And in response to this deceptions of captors, oppressors, and enslavers, these citizens stood boldly in their freedom. They were free, and they intended to live their freedom. So I invite you right now to just close your eyes for a minute and imagine that you were a slave on June 19th 1865. I know it's hard to do. It's difficult for me, but just go there with me for a moment. Imagine on this hot summer day, you're working in the field, which you've been doing since the crack of dawn. And perhaps this is maybe the middle of the day. Or you're working in a hot kitchen preparing food or cleaning a home or taking care of children. So you're there and then you hear news that freedom has finally come. What would you do at this point? And you don't need to tell me, just think about what you would do because I'm not sure what I would have done either. Thank you for going there with me. So on that day, 250 enslaved people were freed and despite the message to stay and work for their owners, which some of them probably did, 
Many left the state immediately and headed north to nearby states in search of family members who had been taken to other regions during slavery. Some sought reparations from their owners or former owners, while others simply celebrated. Early celebrations of Juneteenth involved prayer and family gatherings, and later included annual pilgrimages to Galveston by formerly enslaved people and their families. And at many early Juneteenth celebrations, the Statue of Liberty was featured prominently as a reminder to everyone of the liberation that was the freed person's birthright. And these celebrations often included a reading of a portion of the Emancipation Proclamation. And the part that was mostly read was, all persons held as slaves shall be then, thenceforward, and forever free. And the executive government of the United States will recognize and maintain the freedom of such persons and will do no act or acts to repress such persons or any of them in any efforts they may make for their actual freedom. In his letter to the Romans, St. Paul writes, we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us. And while I cannot, for the life of me, imagine slaves boasting in their sufferings, I can understand how suffering might produce endurance and how endurance produces character, which leads to hope. One of the many people who endured and worked diligently to improve their skills, talents, resourcefulness, and to build other character strengths is a woman known to some as the grandmother of Juneteenth. Opal Lee is a 96-year-old retired teacher from Texas whose paternal great-grandmother was born into bondage in Louisiana. She's also a tireless advocate and community leader who has played a pivotal role in raising awareness and advancing the recognition of Juneteenth as a federal holiday in these United States. Lee was born in Marshall, Texas in 1927, at a time when racial segregation and discrimination were deeply entrenched in American society. Growing up in the era of Jim Crow laws, she experienced firsthand the inequalities faced by African Americans and her early encounters with racism fueled her determination to work towards change and to fight for justice. Advocacy for Juneteenth started when she participated in her first Juneteenth parade in 1979. Since then, she has dedicated her life to raising awareness about the holiday and its historical significance. And in 2016, at the young age of 89, Lee decided her new life mission was to spread the word about Juneteenth to everybody. And she believed the best way to do that was to help have Juneteenth be declared a national holiday. <coughs> so Lee decided to start a walking campaign in cities along the route from her home in Fort Worth to Washington, D.C., and she walked that distance to deliver a petition to the White House. Now, it wasn't a straight line. She didn't walk in a straight line. <laughs> but over several weeks, Lee arrived in cities where she'd been invited to speak and walked two and a half miles to symbolize the two and a half years it took for enslaved people in Texas to learn they were free. And Lee's efforts and unwavering commitment have garnered significant attention 
and support for Juneteenth. She became widely known as the grandmother of Juneteenth because of her advocacy and has been honored with numerous awards for her activism. Her work has helped to elevate the visibility of Juneteenth, leading to increased recognition at both the state and federal levels. And finally, her relentless advocacy and efforts bore fruit when in 2021, Juneteenth was officially designated as a federal holiday in the United States. On June 17, 2021, when President Biden signed the bill into law, Opal Lee was right there beside him. It took five long years, but Lee did what she called a holy dance. I'm not sure what it was like, but she did a holy dance. <laughs> Stating it was a dance she and her ancestors had waited. They'd been waiting 155 years, 11 months, and 28 days to do. <laughs> and now she said, we can finally celebrate. We can finally dance together, the whole country coming together to celebrate. This historic achievement marked a significant milestone in recognizing the importance of Juneteenth and its place in American history. And through her activism, she has encouraged dialogue, education, and engagement surrounding racial equity, equality, and the ongoing struggle against systemic racism. Even today, Lee continues her activism. And only this year, last month actually, the University of North Texas bestowed Opal Lee with an honorary doctorate at its spring 2023 commencement ceremony that took place on Mother's Day. <laughs> In our gospel reading this week, Jesus commissions his 12 disciples to liberate and enliven the harassed and helpless. Seeing the multitudes of sheep without a shepherd, Jesus is deeply moved, and so he tells his disciples, go, go and proclaim the good news of the kingdom. Go and cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, and cast out demons. Go and touch, go and heal, go and resurrect, go and love, go and make peace. And friends, this commissioning is also for us. Major General Gordon Granger rode into Galveston, Texas on June 19, 1865 to spread the news of the Emancipation Proclamation, albeit two and a half years late. Opal Lee believed her mission was to bring awareness to Juneteenth by advocating for the day to be celebrated as a national holiday. It took five years, but she never lost hope. And I'm sure she'll be celebrating tomorrow. <laughs> Friends, Jesus sent the disciples to a particular group of people, to the lost sheep of Israel. And you all at St. David's are doing amazing work with Trinity Center and with your other um, ministries. Yet, there's still work to do. Where else do you see lost sheep today? Where do you see people who need to hear some good news? What particular group of people could you go to? Who are there out there who are still harassed and mistreated? To whom might you go? And going is never easy. But the good news in all of this is that Jesus never sends us alone. The 12 were sent out together, and he sends us out together also. We are each called to labor in the vineyards, but we are called to labor together, to labor as a community, 
with the Holy Spirit, guiding and giving us the words and courage we may lack. Beloved, the historical legacy of Juneteenth shows the value of never ever giving up hope in uncertain times. And while we have made some progress, we still have a long, long way to go. There are still many in our nation, in our world, who are harassed and helpless. There are many 21st century demons that plague the world. Will you work to usher in the kingdom of God? Paul tells us that hope does not disappoint. Friends, will you work to keep hope alive? Amen. Amen. Now, standing as you're able, let us affirm our common faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. It's on page six in your order of worship. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternal God of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For our I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our bishops, especially Michael, our presiding bishop, Andy, Kay, Jeff, and Hector, our bishops, and for Alanafi, Bishop of Southern Malawi, for this gathering and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed, especially Jim Prentice and Don Baker. Pray for those who have died.
ask your prayers for those for whom prayers have been requested through St. David's and those who we name at this time. Ask your prayers of thanksgiving for things that you will name at this time. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Holy and righteous God, you created us in your image. Grant us grace to contend fearlessly against evil and to make no peace with oppression. Help us, like those of generations before us, resist the evil of slavery and human bondage in any form, in any manner of oppression. Help us to use our freedoms to bring justice among people and nations everywhere. To the glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. Greet each other with the peace of Christ. Good morning. Again, it's wonderful to see all of you. If you're visiting with us, we are very happy to have you. We particularly want to know you, so please, after the service, introduce yourself uh, so that we can fill in any questions that you have about the life of the congregation. For those of you who are online, if you're visiting, please identify yourself in the chat and someone will reach out to you as well. A few things coming up that you need to know about. One is some really good news from the Anglican Diocese of Southern Malawi. You know we have a very important ministry there with Warm Heart International, and we have been helping uh, provide a building and all the stuff that's required to get a medical clinic open, and that's been going on for over 15 years. And finally, on Tuesday of this week, Tuesday the 20th, they're having a soft opening of that clinic of the, of the uh, maternity ward, which is the, where hell it all started. So we're very excited about that. And, I, and this would not have happened without our friend Tom Gephardt here at St. David's who has been leading that effort. So it's wonderful news. And they expect a celebratory opening on August the 5th. They have solar at the clinic. And so they hope to be able to broadcast it digitally for us. So we'll be able to join them for that celebration. So this is great news. And we're very, very excited about that. Um, this year also, you know, we're celebrating our 175th as a congregation. Holy Grounds, our coffee shop, has been open for 70 years. And so we're making a major change down there. We're changing the footprint of it. It will still be a beautiful gathering place. You'll still be able to get your specialty coffees and a very limited curated amount of retail things that you can have. But for them to do that, we've got to clear out what's in there. Um, and I think the folks at eight and nine got there before you did because what we told them is, go down there today, everything in the shop is $1. All right, we're just trying to get things out of the shop. Um, so go down, buy, if there's anything left, go stop by and pick up some things. Then we will we'll do that next Sunday as well. 
and then we're going to close it for a few weeks while we change the footprint and do some construction work in that space. And we look forward to opening by Welcome Home Sunday, which is August the 13th. So we're very excited about that. Along with that, the historic church will be open before that. We've got a wedding on August the 5th in historic church. And then the service for, and then our Pride Eucharist will be Saturday night of that week. And then on Welcome Home Sunday 13th, we'll all be back in historic church. Um, that's what they're saying. So we're still, we're still really excited about that. And so it's all going beautifully well. Um, we are in the middle of a series in our Crail C lectures uh, called um, Understanding and Experience in the Holy Spirit. I taught a class on that today, and, uh, and Kristen Braun will teach the class next week, so come and help us finish that off. And then on Saturday of this week, June 24th, we'll have a Holy Eucharist as we celebrate the Feast of the Nativity of St. John the Baptist, so come join us for that. Chef Ray, 4th of July is coming up. Chef Ray's taking orders for brisket. I don't know of a better brisket in town than Chef Ray's, which is a big thing to say for Austin, Texas, but I love his brisket, so he's taking orders now. Deadline is June 25th, and you can pick them up on July the 2nd from 9 to 1. All that stuff is in your order of worship. Um, there's also going to be a family play day. Our family ministry is going to gather together at Sunset Valley Playground on Saturday, July the 1st, beginning at 1030. Also, Mark and Eric have asked me to ask you if you like to sing to stop by and talk to him. We're not asking you to sign up for the choir for the next decade, but we are getting you We may be thinking about being in the choir for the summer. Our summer choirs are starting, and we would love to add some new voices to that. So if you're interested in learning more about that, or if someone sitting next to you has said, hey, you sing really nice, you maybe should be in the choir, you know, go talk to Mark, and he will be happy to fill in the blanks for you on that. All right, let's see. Then uh, Sacred Ground. We're going to offer another 11-week uh, workshop called Sacred Ground. It is a curriculum that was created by the Episcopal Church and that's been curated by our group that's doing it here to put it in a little bit different format. It provides materials for small group engagement and discussion around issues of race and around the origins and impact of the slave trade in the U.S. and the resources for racial healing and justice. Uh, participating in the Sacred Ground program this fall is a way to start making a difference in our society and join the thousands of others who are working to create a more just, loving, and affirming world. So far, 70 people from St. David's have gone through the Sacred Ground curriculum. We would like to continue to grow that, um, and that will be offered in the fall. Registration is already on the website, so you can look at that. That and all the other things are on our website at www.stdave.org, so check it out, and I'll lift up all the ministries of the parish in your prayers. It is June, and it is this week, and so we want to offer birthday blessings. So does anybody have a June birthday? If you do, please stand where you are. Just stand up so we can see you. We can love you and be proud of you. There you go, Goose. All right, yes, good. Yes. Let's say a prayer for you all. Gracious God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray on these, your servants, as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday, y'all. And now we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And this is the love of God, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us.
Lord be with you. <laughs> Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us new people in Jesus Christ, our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, and the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with the Blessed Virgin Mary blessed David of Wales, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to sing. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Good morning. 
of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Savior. Amen. Now may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.
peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And go call your dad. Yeah. <laughs>